Thanks so much for opening your garden gate for us. And right now we're going to be talking about jazzing up the garden by focusing on things other than plants. And I'm joined by my friend Pam Pennick, who is a landscape designer here in town. PennickLandscapeDesign.com is her uh, business website. Right. I think you're probably better known to the gardening community as uh, the creator of Digging, an award-winning gardening blog that is really an inspiration to a lot of folks out there. Thanks, so Tom. It's Thanks always, for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure to ha visit with you, Pam. And we're, we're going to just quickly show folks four simple ways to really kind of provide some focus and pizzazz to the garden mm -hmm. in ways that are kind of non-plant related, right? Right. Hardscaping. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can talk about paths. Would you right. like to do that? Well, let's, let's start, we can start with paths. You know, I want, you know, before we dive into the specifics, uh, just a just quick word about this, this, this thing about, you know, uh, the gardens are not just the plants. They're um, not. You know, they're meant for to be this kind of interaction between the, the you know, humans and nature. Right. And organized in particular kind of ways. So a lot of non-plant elements have to come to bear in that. That's right. Most of us fall in love with the plants first. Right. And we start planting and planting and the rest of it's just an afterthought. And then you look out one day and you're like, how do I get into this garden, and where can I find a place to sit, and where can I walk where it won't be tromping where through can the I mud left my over? Friends, That's right. You so know. you need some space, and um, those kind of spaces often get put in afterwards. Right. And and that's okay because you can always carve out spaces afterwards. But right. if you think about them as you're planting, mm -hmm. you can really do something special with those spaces. Yeah. Well, you you reference paths, and that's a perfect way to begin because you need to be able to move through a garden, mm -hmm. and paths allow that. Mm -hmm. But they also direct your feet and eyes. They and sure do, yeah. You can um, create spaces to move through the garden. When you put a focal point at the end of a path, it helps draw you along that path. Right. So there are all kinds of ways that you can use those for more than just getting from here to there. And mm -hmm. you can tell your visitors where to go exactly. by the kinds of paths you make and how wide you make them and the kind of materials that you use. And the experience, of too. I mean, if it's a stepping stone, it's a very different experience than a broad, wide That's path. Right. That's right. That's right. You might use one for the front yard and one for the back. Right. One for the main path and mm -hmm. one for the one you want people to linger on. Right. Well. When planning a path, um, whether it's going to be big and broad or using stepping stones, preparation work is really important. It is. And, yes. uh, and you know, I'm one of those people who likes a comfortable path. Mm -hmm. You know, I, most of the gardens I've created for myself have been intended for lots of people to be in the garden. Uh -huh. You know, I like to have I like to have visitors, so I create big wide paths. What's an appropriate way to go about? creating a pathway? Uh, the key, whether you use decomposed granite or stepping stones or lay a stone path, and these are all very do it yourself mm -hmm. is to do the right preparation. Mm -hmm. Rather than taking your stepping stones and just kind of plunking them on your mud or your mulch or, you know, digging out a little patch of grass and plunking them in, if you can put some road base down, excavate first, take out, a, you know, a few inches of soil. Um, if you're going to do a, a, a whole paved path of either decomposed granite mm -hmm. or stone, Excavate that whole area, put a nice edging in, a strong edging to hold the stones. Put in some road base. When you say road base, mm -hmm. this is just like crushed stone. It is, and, and, and you can. Sand I think you can buy it labeled road base right. at, at you know one of the big box stores. Right. And but you could use decomposed granite. You mm -hmm. could use um, granite sand. But yeah. just basically, you want something that will compact. And the road base has some angular rocks mixed in. Yeah. So it compacts nicely. It doesn't, you know, it won't wash away underneath your your path. Right. So you, you take that. You put in several inches. You get a tamper, which you can rent again at one of the box stores or you can get a heavy roller of some sort. Mm -hmm. But basically, you just get out there and you pound it flat. Yeah. Uh, you wet it down, and it basically becomes a very yeah. um, thick base for right. your path. Right. And, and then, then from there. Then you, you can lay out your stone or whatever kind of material in there. That's right. That's right. And then it will stay put. And a mm -hmm. couple years later, you won't have your stones popping up or right. washing away in the rain or whatever. And, and you can also have, you know, the way that you pave it, though, makes all the difference in the world, too. I mean, you could just have one material, like, granite gravel. Mm -hmm. right. But you could also embed things in there that really add some pizzazz to the pathway you and can. make it an experience. And that's a fun way to do it. And, and um, I've seen that done in a number of public gardens and mm -hmm. uh, in people's, at people's homes. There's any number of things you can do from using the little Mexican beach pebbles and making a like a circular design in a path or if you're laying out um, uh, a stone path, you can do insets mm -hmm. of bricks or whatnot. Um, yeah. And that really does. It gives people, it gives a little stopping point in the path for people mm -hmm. to stop and look at it and just
just makes it more interesting. So again, one of the most basic th elements of the garden, the path, mm -hmm. doesn't need to be pedestrian, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Good point. laughs> so, That's right, it can be more special. Yeah. Right, M and make it a part of your personality. That's, I think, the important thing. Yeah, that's right. With Give individuality to your paths as well as, well as everything else. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's move on to another uh, simple thing. And the okay. screening devices are often uh, very utilitarian, needed elements in the garden. Right. Or expensive. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Right. They can be very expensive. They can be, yeah. But they don't need to be. And no. there's some materials that are very Texas-y feeling things that are available to us here mm -hmm. that can be used and uh, be very stylish at the same time. Uh huh. One of my favorites is using cattle panel, which mm -hmm. you can get at um, Callahan's ranch supply, ranch supply stores. Yeah. They come in about 10 foot lengths. Mm -hmm. They're bendable. They're not easily bendable, they will not roll up, yeah. but they come in a big length that can be bent and made into a curved wall if you want. Mm -hmm. And they're so easy to install, and so if you were, say, a renter and you needed some screening that was temporary, mm -hmm. they work great for that because they can be removed. And the key is to buy T-posts, which, again, you can get at the ranch supply stores right. or the big box stores, and you get a metal sleeve, just pound those into the ground. And they're sturdy enough to hold that cattle panel. And if you want to disguise the T-posts and make it even more fun, you can put something in front of the T-posts. So mm. from one side of it, you won't see the T-posts at all. Right. And you can spray paint the T-posts brown mm -hmm. or whatever color would blend in. Mm -hmm. But um, the key is you can basically put up that cattle panel. It's nice to do a little curved wall. You can do an yeah. S-shaped wall. Right. You can make doorways, mm -hmm. which I've seen at Zilker Gardens. Um, that you would actually walk through, and you can grow vines on them or, or whatever you would like to screen right. off certain areas and make garden rooms and add a vertical yeah. element to your it garden. It works extremely well. It's a very durable material. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really like the look of it, and yeah. people are using it in lots of creative ways. They are, yeah. It goes with that kind of um, the galvanized metal siding right. that you see and stock yeah. tanks and all the other fun stuff in the garden. Well, and, and again, and if you, want, if you change your mind, you can move it. You can move it. If you have to move, you can take it with you, <laughs> as I just did when yeah. I changed gardens. I, I took a screen with me. Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody loves water features in the garden, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people are afraid of digging a yeah. pond and maintaining it, and you like to create them in stock tanks. Stock tanks are wonderful. I mean, again, you go to those feed supply stores and you can just get all kinds of great materials for your for your garden that make it a little more individual and fun and mm -hmm. uh, making a pond is it can't be any easier than just plunking a stock tank you know in the right spot in your garden and filling it up with water lilies and fish and mm -hmm. it's very easy to do it doesn't require any digging there's no liner there's right. no pump if you don't want one because um, if you get the right balance you know you can just it can be self-sustaining right and uh, talk about something that really adds that kind of pizzazz to a space you know they, they come in different shapes but you, you know uh -huh. if you, ha you can create a real focal point in the garden with this because of the uh, elevated uh, right. uh, hi height of it and right. uh, the the interesting materials and mm -hmm. and the shape and then add the water and wow you've I got know. something really special well I love that shiny silver anyway yeah. and yeah. I think it looks great with our xeric plants that right. tend to be silver and blue mm -hmm. so I like to show off a little bit of that silver you could paint it if you wanted to do something even more fun but uh, the key with um, putting the stock tank in your garden is not to just plunk it down anywhere right. not to just stick it right next to your deck in the lawn that sort of thing make a bed around it mm -hmm. and maybe make a little path up to it so that you can easily walk up to it because all your visitors are going to want to look in that pond and, right. and see the fish, and, and so are you. Right. So um, that's one way you can do it. And um, another way is to actually make a whole focal point of that pond itself and put paving all the way around it. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, you know, again, it's just the key is to give access to it. Mm -hmm. And if you pave it, that's a great way to do yeah. it. And, and echo the form of it mm -hmm. out into the garden. If it's circular, have a, have a band right. around it that's circular, and then maybe plantings around that are circular. So it, That's right. The, Play it, up those curves. Exactly. Because the stock tanks are curves. They're either circles or they're ovals, and uh, you right. can really do a lot with that. Yeah. But I've seen them used in contemporary gardens that have very straight edges, too. They yeah. work wonderfully yeah. there, too. Either way, yeah. you know, but uh, I always think it's uh, repetition is an important thing, mm -hmm. you know, you know, build on what, the things that you have and kind of yes. play them out there. And we all love curves in the garden, yeah. so, yeah. One, you know, it's interesting, we, were talk we started by talking about paths, which direct your feet, mm -hmm. and uh, gates are an, an interesting and important kind of partner to the path. They are. They're transition points. Mm -hmm. And they uh, and they're not just to prevent something from going through, 
But just like a path can direct your eyes, a, right. a gate can direct your eyes. It can, and um, you know, so many of us inherit those builder's gates that are just the the planks of wood. They're straight. They're boring. Uh, you can do something even with those if you mm -hmm. want to kind of dress them up, and make them a little more fun. You can take a little saw and curve the top, or you know, make the top into a peak, and just jazz it up a little bit. You can build an arbor over the top of it. You can cut a window into the gate itself. Mm -hmm. And um, what makes that even better, takes it one step further, is to make sure you sight a focal point of some kind through that window, right. so that when you approach that gate and you look through the window, you see something to entice you, exactly. makes you want to go through. That's right. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's, I, I love, I love this because it's so simple. Mm -hmm. It is. And, you know. And, and but, cheap. Right. Yeah. And, and, but, you know, w one other thing about gates that I think people tend to forget is it's that one moment in the garden where you, if you are moving through a space, uh -huh. you have to s stop and yes. slow down a little bit. Right. So you can take in that view. Mm hmm but it's also an opportunity for fragrant things because often people do, are moving through the garden at such a pace that they miss fragrance. That's a great idea. So you could grow a fragrant vine, exactly. have an arbor over the gate. Yeah. Lots of opportunities for all these things that we're talking about, really, mm -hmm. of, of thinking them through and, and making them integral to the experience of the garden. Mm -hmm. and making so, it welcoming. Right. Introducing your own personality into the space. Yeah. So yeah. whether you're you're doing a path or patio, mm -hmm. uh, creating a trellis, stock tank, or whatever, you've got lots of opportunities here to make the experience of the garden special. And I think that in in all the things that we've talked about, the materials choice mm -hmm. also really says a lot about who you are. It does. And I, I want to point out too that all of these things that we've talked about can be done by do-it-yourselfers. Yeah. That you you know. Um, you don't have to um, hire a big crew to install these features for you. Um, mm -hmm. You can do them yourself and really have a hand in the creation and creativity of your own garden. And then you, that makes it all the more rewarding when you, when you so. step back yeah. at the end and you see what you've done. Right. Yeah. That's it's, a big deal. Yeah. And it, and you know too, if you're looking for ways to save money so you can spend more of your money on the plants. Exactly. Uh, that's a great way to do it. All right. Well. Yeah. I want to again get give people a way to be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. um, you you're obviously a landscape designer, so you can That's help right. people directly. It's uh, Pinnock Landscape Designs. That's right, PinnockLandscapeDesign.com. Okay, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, digging is the uh, is the blog, right. and uh, loaded with so many beautiful images and great ideas. Thanks. Always, Thanks. always. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to see you again, Pam. It was great to be here, Tom. Thank uh, you. Okay, coming up next is our friend Daphne Richards. Mm -hmm.